Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Priyanka, and we'll be continuing on with our first Atlantic lectures. So the topic for today is impression making techniques in FPD. All right. So in the lecture schedule, it does not say in FPD. It's supposed to be in FPD. Okay. So we'll be covering RPD uh, later on and CD later on. Okay. Coming to the learning outcomes. Uh, first of them uh, is, okay, so uh, at the end of the lecture, you should be able to discuss the properties of silicon impression materials, demonstrate um, manipulation of elastomeric impression materials, okay, apply the disinfection. Coming to the definition of an impression, so impression is a negative likeliness or copy in reverse of the surface of an object and uh, sorry object and an imprint of the teeth and adjacent structures for use in dentistry okay so coming to the impression materials it is uh, classified uh, under elastic materials and non-elastic materials in elastic materials you have synthetic elastomers hydrocolloids so in synthetic elastomers you have polysulfide silicons polyethers Hydrocolloid is reversible, which is agar, irreversible, which is alginate, okay? And non-elastic materials, which are impression plaster, impression compound, zinc oxide regional phase, and impression waxes, all right? So just know the basics, yeah. Coming to the, you know, the one of the learning outcomes, which is properties of silicon impression materials. So Impression materials are used in various phases of denture construction. It can be um, classified broadly in rigid, thermoplastic, or elastic substances. Okay, elastic materials mainly uh, are those which remain elastic or flexible stay even after removal from the mouth. Okay, elastic impression materials mo most generally are used for impression making for RPD, immediate danger, crown, FPD, when the tooth has undercut or details need to be recorded to review those. Okay, so generally the clinic, for a clinical purpose or interest, we see these 12 properties in any of the materials. So toxicity, color of the base accelerator, time required for mixing, working time, consistency, permanent deformation, during removal, dimensional stability, which is very important, flow after setting, flexibility, reproduction of detail, very important, um, compatibility with dye and model materials, deterioration during storage of an unmixed material. Okay, so these are general. Okay, guys, so, um, yeah, so coming to the impression technique. So impression techniques can be characterized as monophase and dual phase. So, which is uh, using a single step uh, medium viscosity material or a dual phase um, using either one step or two step heavy uh, putty or heavy bodied uh, material and a light body wash, okay? So usually we are using a dual phase two-step technique so we do use a, a putty and then we um, do it spaced we put a spacer and then we put it in the patient mouth take out the spacer and then we put the light body in all right uh, coming to the monophase uh yeah so coming to the monophase impression techniques guys Uh, so yes, you can select and prepare a rigid tray for a sufficient size to accommodate 2 to 3 mm thickness uh, of the impression material, all right? And uh, uh, we can just brush a thin coat of uh, the adhesive tray adhesive if required and uh, allow it to dry for 5 minutes and... Uh, then using like a you know firm dispensing stroke, you can just coat the entire thing with the monophase impression material while keeping the tip immersed properly in the material to avoid any entrapment of air bubbles. Okay. Then uh, also one technique is you can directly syringe the material into the mouth. Okay. So 
uh, it can be done in two minutes, right? Sorry, the tray can be filled in two minutes. All right. So number five uh, can be you can be syringed material can be syringed around the teeth surface, and it can be di dispensed from an intraoral syringe. So once you remove the gingival cord and gingival retraction cord and inject the monophase impression material around a clean and dry tooth preparation, uh, the intraoral working time is one minute. Okay, so slowly seed the tray in the mouth. So it should be within one minute of the start of oral syringing and two minutes uh, of the start of the tray filling. All right, so you have to do it within that time. Oral setting time is four minutes. Usually it's almost the same for all the elastomeric impressions materials. You can remove the tray, rinse, dry, and disinfect, and then pour model for 30 minutes. Okay, all right. Okay, so you can apply a downward pressure along the periphery of the tray to break the seal. Guys, this is very important because these materials uh, are tight fitting materials and they take up a proper suction in the mouth. So you can break the seal or you can use a three way syringe air and also try and break the seal. So you have to exert pressure properly and uh, apply proper force and then it can be, the seal can be broken and the impression can be taken off, right? Um, in, uh, you have to inspect the impression for any tear or any defects which should not be there. So thoroughly examine, explore the sulcus of the prepared teeth, surrounding dentation, any residual impression, remnants. Okay, all right. Monophase uh, ma impression material, very stable and can be poured um, within two weeks post polymerization. But guys, ideally, like mentioned in the previous slide, should be poured within half an hour should be poured immediately. Firstly, we'll be looking at these two, okay? So, uh, and one stage is one stage, two stage can be, uh, you know, in single or double stages. Yeah, so yeah, we'll be, we'll be described with or without the spacer, so we'll be taking, we'll be describing it in the coming slide. One stage impression is putty and washer recorded simultaneously, also called as twin mix or laminate technique. So guys, you take a putty and uh, you spread it uh, well on the tray, the amount required, and you layer uh, the wash material, which is the light body on top, and you just press on the surface of the um, maxilla or the mandible, the, the impression site, and you take it to stage unspaced. So unspaced, is when you take a putty record first and after setting relined with a thin layer of wash. Understand? So you just put the putty material and um, you press it against the teeth, you take it out and then you put a thin layer of uh, light body and then uh, it is recorded and you take it out. Okay. So coming to the one stage uh, guys, so this is like a gingival cord if you use a gingival retraction cord. Okay. Um, so it has to be taken out, dried, and you can place the impression here, and uh, the light body can be here, the putty is here, and the tray is supposed to be um, placed properly and uh, uh, pressed inside the impression material, all right, okay? So you can see that... Uh, there is a putty and a light body, all right? And this would be the impression. Okay, so two space, two stage unspaced technique, okay? So in that, what do we, what happens is putty is recorded for us after setting, reline with a thin wash material. So wash material is the light body material. So disadvantage here is additional time of having to wait for two materials so to set yes is a problem and then contamination of the putty with saliva which may prevent light body adhering to it yes this is a problem guys okay so difficulty in resetting the set putty in the mouth is also a problem okay right um coming to the third technique which is the two stage spaced technique guys okay so as we mentioned, there were three techniques. As for two-stage unspaced, except a space is created for the wash. This space may be made by, so what happens here is 
um, in the unspaced, you had no spacer in the middle. You had a putty and you had a light body. Okay, so what? Let the putty set, take it out, put a light body, let it set, take it out. Here you have putty. Uh, on top of putty, you put a polythin material, polythin spacer. You, you press against the mouth properly and uh, when the material sets, you take it out and then you put the uh, light body material on top. Okay, so polythin spacer over the teeth prior to making the putty impression is used recording the putty impression before the tooth preparation okay it can be also used for that um any gouging uh, away the putty and providing escape channels for the wash okay so basically uh you would be getting a proper isolation and a clear space when when you do like this right so that's why you put a spacer in the middle Okay, so polythene spacer over the teeth prior to making the putty impression. So it can be put like that. Okay, so prior to making it, you can just uh, put the impression over it and then put the material on top, guys. All right, so um, heavy body, a spacer, and then a light body on top, guys, like that. So, of course, take that out and then put a light body, and that's how it would look. And this is the accuracy of the material, guys highly accurate guys all right okay so coming to the disinfectant uh, techniques for impression materials guys all right so this is the last and, uh, and third outcome the learning outcome so disinfection is a process that eliminates many um, you know of the pathogenic organisms or any objects except bacterial and the spores while sterilization in the com is a complete elimination of all the microorganisms, including spores. Okay, so uh, guys, all these has to be removed. So basically, disinfection is basically the whole thing. Disinfection is divided into three categories. So high level disinfection, which involves bacterial spore in inactivity, along with other microbial forms. Intermediate level disinfection involves destruction of microorganisms like tubercle bacilli, but not able to kill spores. Low level disinfection possesses narrow antimicrobial activity. All right, so these yeah, the impressions are divided into these. So we will be seeing the uh, one table after. Uh, a few slides okay so until 1991 it was recommended that the impression disinfection should be just done by rinsing under the water and uh, which will take care of 40 percent of bacteria virus fungi which will be removed potential for transmission of microbials remaining there okay so everything was dependent on basically just the water so in recent times what happened a pre-wash of the impression with the running water is advocated first to cast off all the particles, the blood, the saliva, prior to active disinfectant procedures, guys. So, yes, we are highly interested in the disinfection procedures, guys. Okay, so disinfection of dental impression should be a routine procedure in a dental office or a dental laboratory, okay, to get rid of all the uh, growing organisms so all oh sorry there's seven solutions okay so we'll just, just discussing just the basics so glutrol dehyde is a high level disinfectant and is available in neutral alkaline and acidic form it's a broad spectrum chemical agent with fast killing capability also known as chemi chemical uh, sterilizer right so uh, yes this is the one which is most commonly used guys okay all right so this is the one we use okay we have a spray in the department we use it okay coming to sodium hypochlorite so it provides intermediate level of disinfectant and has a broad spectrum antimicrobial activity idophores are halogens which uh, provide low to intermediate level disinfection these are bactericidal uh, mucobacterial uh, virucidal and also fungicidal okay it requires more contact and also used as an antiseptic rather than a disinfectant, guys, okay? 
coming to alcohol so these provide intermediate level disinfection and uh, include isopropyl alcohol and ethyl alcohol all right so which is usually an antiseptic again isopropyl alcohol all right phenols are also used so these are complex phenols which are classified as intermediate level disinfectants also known as chloroplasmid poisons guys all right Chlorhex, chlorhexidine is also an intermediate level disinfectant and antiseptic. It has a broad spectrum activity, also used as a preservative, guys, okay? So, yes, we use it in our mouthwash too, guys. Chlorhex, yes. <laughs> okay, so coming to uh, ozonated water. So, ozone is an organic, inorganic gaseous molecule. Um, its chemical formula is O3, less stable. Yes, yes, whatever, fine, um, yes. Sorry, so it's less stable than oxygen in a lower atmosphere. It has antimicrobial um, and analgesic uh, and, uh, you know, uh, immunostimulatory activities, right? And uh, anti-hypoxic, right? So it's also anti-hypoxic. So these are some of the features of the disinfectant solutions, guys. So other methods of disinfection, guys, is microwave irradiation so microwave is something which uses to disrupt the cell membrane integrity and cell metabolism which ultimately leads to microbial death okay microwaves are simple to use low in cost provide good disinfection yes dentures are being disinfected with microwaves and found to be better infected and a oh see oh yes so this was done before guys okay so now we're just using the disinfection solutions yeah all right so cast disinfection microorganisms have been recovered even from dental cast and disinfection spray or immersion uh, disinfection solution and incorporation of disinfectant and stone at the time of mixing is important it can be done uh, immersion in 0.5 to 5 percent NaOCl did not change or cause any changes in the dimensions accuracy surface detail quality or compressor strength so this also can be used as a cast disinfection dental cast can also be sterilized guys okay so yes these things can take place sterilization uh uh, of impression sorry various methods are available for that exposure to uv light c modiflave um uh, you know ethylene oxide gas autoclave radio frequency flow discharge so these things are done guys but then we are using the disinfectant spray solutions like i told you okay so coming to types of disinfectant and uh, impression materials so type high level disinfectant intermediate and low level disinfectant blue till the high type of impression you can irreversible hydrocolloid okay um and uh, zinc oxide you know, oh so this is guys uh, this is alginate polysulfide polyether addition silicon so most commonly used is this one time for exposure 10 minutes so what you do is you wash the impression first and uh, uh, you can dry it out and then uh, you can just spray the solution and let it dry for 10 minutes and then you can put it in a plastic bag or pour it of course pour it yeah <laughs> okay um, coming to the intermediate level so Sodium hypochlorite, complex idophores, phenols, chlorhex, and alcohol. So we have just read through all of them just now. Again, same things can be also impression compounds, which of course we are not using here. Uh, so impression compounds are uh, materials which you are used to take uh, impressions of edentulous jaws, the primary impressions, guys. Here we are not using it. So 10 minutes again, okay? Same thing, wash off, dry it off, spray with the solution, let it dry, okay? Uh, quaternary ammonium compounds, low risk, simple phenol uh, detergents, yes, really not recommended for impression disinfections, guys. Okay, coming to types of uh, disinfectant, it's mechanism. So we just, you know, read through it. So this is in like more table form. Glutaria, 2%, usually concentrated is, a concentrated is recommended. Type of disinfection is non-oxidizing. Primary action is alkalizing agent for the protein, mainly affects the amines, amides, and the uh, sulfide groups, right? Example is the Cytex, okay? 
Sodium hypochlorite is oxidizing 0.5%, can be used, it disrupts the cell membrane, right? Okay, it damages the DNA. Chlorox, uh, Purex, so these are some of the examples. Idophores is oxidizing one, one to two percent can be used. Proteins and enzymes are deactivated. Betadine, yeah, so you understand this is the most common use. This is like an antiseptic which we use, yeah. Uh, alcohols, non-oxidizing 60 to 90 percent cell membrane lipid content is uh, solubilized and protein is precipitated, so isopropyl alcohol is the most commonly used. Chlorhex, non-oxidizing 2 to 4 percent, takes care of the intracellular content, that meaning it's, you know, uh, disrupts the contents and the cell membrane is damaged. So Savalon is the commercial name and very commonly used. Everyone knows that, guys. Okay. So phenolic or phenols, um, these are non-oxidizing 1 to 3 percent is the concentration recommended. Protoplasmic poisons cause damage to the cell membrane. Lysol, Dettol. So these are very commonly used, guys. Okay. All right. So, guys, um, thank you so much for patient listening. And uh, that's all for today. And uh, for any questions, guys, uh, please uh, come and find me on in the Polyclinic 3 in the Prosto Department on Level 20. And uh for reading you can read uh any of the fpd textbooks uh for the impression uh materials and the manipulation guys the second objective so any of the fpd textbooks are rosenstiel and schillenberg guys those are the name of the authors and those are the fpd textbooks for the disinfectant uh, techniques and the properties of silicon materials, you for properties of silicon material, you can refer to any of the dental material books, guys. Okay, all right. So any of those books and uh, for disinfectant, I uh, you can read any of the books, but I took it from an article, guys. Yeah. So you can read the articles as well. Okay. So for any further questions, come and talk to me and uh, uh, read the whole seminar, guys. Yeah. Thank you.